Hey everybody and welcome back to Art a la Carte. In this video I am taking you on a journey as I create a piece of artwork, which being a full-time artist isn't relatively new to my channel, it's an art channel, but this piece is, is kind of different. It's a little bit special. When you work on a finished piece that is going to involve the skills and, and knowledge of art that you've gained over years, plus hopefully the, the working together of an of a art medium like watercolor, it can be a fun challenge. But when you throw in that the paper you're creating on is over a hundred year old newspaper kind of like paper, that makes it a whole new ball game and a whole lot of fun and scary at the same time. So for those of you who are interested, what is it like to paint on 100-year-old paper? <laughs> I'll join me on this journey. Now, this is actually the second piece that I've created using this paper. It is a challenge. For those of you who might be familiar with some of my artwork, the first piece I created was my Eyes of Blue piece here. And I did that over five years ago. It has taken me five years to gain the courage to attempt this a second time. It, not that it turned out bad. I love how Eyes of Blue turned out. It's one of my favorite pieces that I've done, but it's challenging. It takes everything that you know about watercolor and throws it out the window. This video, I'm going to give you some of the tips and tricks and helps that I've learned from working with this paper to maybe help you if you want to take some old paper and paint on it. Before you even begin painting or creating your piece, there's a couple things you're gonna to wanna to take into consideration. First, the actual paper that you're going to use. I would advise to do a little research. You don't want to be painting on something that is highly valuable in the state that it already is. The paper that I'm using is an old magazine called The Etude, and my dad found it at a secondhand shop in this bin underneath all of this stuff. The guy was gonna throw it out, so my dad paid him a couple of bucks and got a few remnants of these magazines. The magazines are in disrepair and they don't have covers and the binding is, is giving out on them, but the pages inside are relatively in good shape. Once you have found the paper that you want to possibly put artwork on, you need to know that not all paper is going to work with all mediums, especially watercolor. So you're gonna to wanna to test the paper out. If you add water to the paper, does it make the ink in the text bleed? Does it make the paper ball up? Does the paper buckle? And if it does, which a lot of papers do, what happens to it after it dries? This Etude magazine paper is so amazing because one, the ink does not smear, it does not ball up, feels like I'm, I'm handling like museum quality stuff, but the paper itself is pretty tough. And even though it does buckle a little bit while I'm initially painting it, when it dries, it dries completely smooth and flat like it's never been painted on. It's amazing. Another thing to consider when painting on printed paper is to choose the right piece of paper. The paper itself is going to be an element, a character in your piece. So I don't just randomly rip out a piece of paper and choose that one. I let the paper choose the art. So I'm looking for a space in the paper to put my piece in where it doesn't have like a huge graphic in the middle because that just would look weird if she had something right in the middle of her face. But also I love the ads on the sides. So kind of be a little choosy about which piece you're using. Also check the back side before you choose because the back side might be even better than the front side. Now to get the paper separated from the actual magazine, I could take some scissors and cut it, but I actually like the kind of ripped out look. So this is scary, but I actually rip the paper out. It's so old, it comes out really easily, but there's always that risk of ripping the paper in half. So just be cautious. When I go to put in the initial sketch down on the paper, usually I'm all about guidelines. I make a huge mess when I draw my sketches. I'm doing circles and guidelines and measuring out where things go. But with this, the less I can touch the paper, the better. So I am drawing using a very soft lead and using an extremely light hand. I want the lead to just barely graze the top of the paper. That way, if I need to erase something, it's going to come up with very little erasing. With that being said, I would highly recommend using a gummy or a kneaded eraser because you can kind of actually just stamp the eraser on the lead and it picks up rather than having to rub an actual like, plastic eraser across it. 
Now, whether you decide to ink your drawing in or not is completely up to you. When I did Eyes of Blue, I actually inked in the full piece using a kind of a light brown ink. For this one, I also used light brown, but I only inked in a certain parts of the face, things that I really wanted to kind of sharpen up the edge. But ultimately, I kept most of it just in the pencil form itself. Now we're getting to the part where we're going to actually begin adding the watercolor to the paper. And if you have a piece of paper in, in that, that's not going to be usable, maybe it's ripped or torn or crinkled or stained, I would use that as a test paper for seeing not only how your paper reacts to water and stuff, but also how your paints are going to react to the paper. Like I said before, watercoloring on this type of paper takes just about everything I know about watercolor and flips it. So it's, it's weird. It's fun and challenging, but weird. For example, when I'm painting on regular watercolor paper and I wet an area out and I put the paint on, the paint will spread. And as it dries, it generally will dry nice and even and flat as long as the paper is evenly wet. With this paper, not so much. It likes to puddle and pool and stick together. And because the paper is so old and so many things have touched it, there's so many different smudges and oils and dust particles that are in the paper. I think that's what's attracting the paint and the paint just likes to swarm around unseen things. And so you have these little puddles, which makes her have a blotchy complexion, which is not what I'm going for. So you'll see that after I lay the color, I sp spend, you know, 10, 15 minutes waiting for it to dry because it doesn't like to absorb like watercolor paper. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that part. The water just sits on top of the paper. So I have to wait for it to naturally kind of just dry on its own. But then I'm constantly just moving the paint around with my paintbrush, especially with the lighter tones, so that it doesn't puddle into these little groupings of, of color. Another good tip when creating an, a wash, especially with a lighter tone or even a darker tone, is to make sure that you have enough of that paint prepared. So you'll see here, I have a little palette with some uh, light brown that I'm going to use for the base color of her hair, and I've mixed up more than I'm going to need. That way, if I'm halfway through my painting, I don't run out and have to then go mix some more, hoping it's the same shade. And also as this paint dries on this half of the page, it's not going to meld beautifully back in with this. Because another fun fact, when my watercolor dries on this paper, it, it won't move. Like I can run my hand across and it's not going to lift up on my fingers. But if I try to lay some more watercolor on top of it, it instantly reactivates the paint. And instead of just melding into each other, the paint underneath goes, hey, I'm gonna jump back on your brush. And it's a pain. So it it's very finicky and picky. So once I've laid a lighter tone down and it's dried, I don't wanna go over top of it and place even a slightly darker shade. On top, I want to make sure that if I'm adding another shade on there that it's darker or a completely different color because otherwise you get these little smudges and it's really hard to smooth out. As I said before, this takes time to let it dry. So you're going to build your layers up slowly, starting with your lightest tones first and then going in darker and darker and darker. And you'll see that, you know, I finish one part and I think, yeah, and then I go back and add more color and darker. And, and I don't just stick with one color, especially in her hair. It was so much fun. I put purples and pinks and greens and turquoise and mixing all these with browns and blacks and so her hair is like all these different shades of colors kind of reflecting in her hair. Obviously the inspiration for this piece not only spurs off of the actual magazine page itself, also comes from the YouTube Artist Collective theme, which you guys voted for a few months ago on our Facebook page. If you guys are interested in helping us vote on an upcoming theme, um, I'll leave a link to our Facebook page in the description box below so you can go over and like our Facebook page. But you guys chose vintage, which I was so excited about when I knew it was going to be vintage. I thought, this is what I'm going to paint. I'm going to pull out my Etude magazines and paint another piece with this. So oh, I'm so excited. It's also been a lot of fun to see what other artists have been creating based on this theme because vintage is not a narrow category. It's a huge category because it's there's a lot of vintage stuff out there and it's not just one time period. It's a, you know, it's history. 
anything in history is pretty much like vintage. So if you haven't checked out the other YouTube Artist Collective pieces, I will leave a link to everyone who is officially participating in the description box below. Uh, but you don't have to be an official member of the YouTube Artist Collective to do a YouTube Artist Collective themed piece. I would love to see them. I will also have links to my social media in the description box below. Tag me in your photos so I can see them. You can post them on our Facebook page. We'd love to see them there. Or if you've done a video like this, talking about your YouTube Artist Collective piece or showing the process, put a link to that in the comments section and I will check it out. I love seeing your guys' artwork, what you guys create. Also, speaking of you guys and your amazing amazing artwork. I want to say hi to one of my new friends, Tyann. One of my favorite things about being in YouTube and creating on YouTube is getting to meet you guys and build friendships. That not only you watching these videos, but when you guys take the time to comment or give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel or share this video with your friends, it means so much to me and I'm really, really thankful for that. So you guys are awesome. It's so much fun with this piece. And even after I finished recording this video and upload loaded the footage to this, I, I found myself still going back to the painting and tweaking a few things. So there's even some differences in between the end piece here and what actually is finished. So I went ahead and took some up close photos of that. I have those photos on my Etsy listing because I decided I am going to be selling the original of this piece. My original eyes of blue, I decided a while ago not to sell. It's one of the few pieces that I have kept for my personal private collection but I'm gonna go ahead and put this one up for sale. If you guys are interested in that or just wanna see the up close photos of this painting, I'll leave a link to my Etsy shop in the description box below. I'm hoping to have prints available for this on my Etsy shop. I'll see how fast I can get this to my printer. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If any of you are brand new to my channel, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I have some fun animation videos in the works, hopefully come out next week, as requested by a lot of you guys from a previous animation video that I just did. So you can stay tuned for those. While you're waiting for that one to come out, check out some of these videos or of course, the rest of the YouTube Artist Collective pieces. God bless you guys, keep drawing, being awesome, being kind to people, and we'll see you in another art video. Bye-bye.